Please enjoy this feature presentation of the Crooked River Radio Network. This program is rated for all audiences. The World According to Elmer is sponsored by CrookedRiverRadio.com. Crooked River Radio is an internet radio station that is live 24-7 playing rock and adult contemporary top 40 hits from the 60s through the 90s. You can find us on Live 365, Simple Radio, Roku, Radio Garden and even Alexa as well as our website. Come on and join us on the Crooked River. Welcome aboard. We're headed for the world according to Elmer. With hosts Jerry Sorensen and Pat Morrow. Don't worry you'll enjoy it there. Better buckle in and enjoy the ride. Here come our hosts now. Am I allowed to talk yet? Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if you're joining us tonight and you don't remember last week, I decided to help her with the intro last week, so I thought I would let her finish this time, Pat. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. This is The World According to Elmer. I am Jerry, uh, Jerry Sorensen, your host. I am KG8RRY, and that fella sitting right over there in that chair is Mr. Pat Morrow. He is our Elmer. And he is N80QP. Pat, uh, is it hot enough out there today for you? I guess that's the question of the day right there. I had to take the wife to a uh, doctor's appointment about 4 o'clock. And it was uh, yeah. it was toasty. Wait till yeah. this time tomorrow, though. That's this, what I heard. This uh, time we're, tomorrow, we're, we're not only going to have the heat. We're not only going to have the heat. We're going to be under a... Uh, they've got pretty much the whole the whole state under slight risk. I was on a net this afternoon at four o'clock and one of the gentlemen that was on the net, there was a guy from Florida. Uh, there was a fella from a uh, couple from Arizona. There was a fella from New Mexico, a guy from out in California. There was me. There was uh, about six people from up in Wisconsin and a guy from New York. And uh, I forget which, I, one of the guys in Arizona, I think, said it's 106 uh, degrees there today, Pat. They said it was so 104.4 in England. Could you imagine wow. that with that kind of humidity? Oh, my Lord. I thought Lord. England was like a cold country. I mean, did they get warm all of a sudden? Yep. What happened over there? Just, they said it's the warmest they've ever been. I mean, cold and rainy is what uh, is what England usually is. It, uh, this is unheard of. Maybe maybe there is something to this global warming that everybody talks oh, about. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> And you had an exciting week, which we're going to talk about in just a few minutes out on the bands. Something uh, happened uh, in Pat's life, folks, this week that happened above 50 megahertz. Can you believe it? And we're going to talk about Amazing, that here in a few it? minutes. This is this is a big deal. So so buckle up and don't plan to go anywhere for the next hour or, or God only knows how long till we get done talking. Uh, <laughs> a couple of things before we go on, though. I There are some... Not only are there some great special event stations on right now, but these may, this may be the best grouping of special event stations that I have seen in a while now over the next few days. Get this, Pat. On the 20th, which is tomorrow, the Apollo 11 moon landing. Now, let me ask you a question. I remember back to my grade school days, uh, and this was so many years ago, folks, that all the TVs back in those days, for the most part, including our home, uh, were black and white. There, there were very few uh, color televisions back in that day. But I can remember Pat being a grade school kid and having the teacher wheel that TV in that was mounted on that stand. You know, it had that strap that went over the top of it. And of course, it was an old scratchy black and white TV. You could barely make the picture out. But I can remember us kids sitting at our desks absolutely glued to that old zenith watching the men walk on the moon do you remember that pat oh yeah i also i was a little earlier than you i think <clears throat> um i actually remember sitting in second grade and having the uh, teachers all gather us into one room to watch john glenn go to orbit for three rounds and we were in yeah, there for that a, was a big deal we were in there for the, um, pretty much the whole time it was uh, you know and uh, there you couldn't have heard you could have heard a pin drop in there that wasn't that the most exciting thing ever back during the apollo program you guys have to remember back in those days this had never been done before yep. all of this was brand new 
And all of a sudden, here we were in space, and it was a big deal. We had this president named Kennedy, and uh, he was a pretty decent fella. But one of his goals that he set for the nation was that we would be the first people up there in space. And I, I don't think we were. I think the Russians beat us. The Russians but beat we us were, to space, yes. Um, yeah, but, but we beat them to the moon, didn't we? Yep, by a long shot. So... Uh, we were we were leading the way. America was the leader, and it was a very exciting time here in America. But yeah, all of us kids, man, we would sit there just glued. And and the the pictures, if you guys can ever, I don't know if they have these copies of these videos anywhere, but they were really grainy, and you had to really. It was kind of like listening to static on the ham radio. You had to really watch those pictures carefully because it was hard to make out what was going on. And, uh, boy, those were the days. And now we just take space for granted. And, again, that's something we're going to talk about. Until we go to Mars. Minutes. Yeah. Well, that's the next thing, right? Yeah. Uh, are you going to volunteer, by the way, to be on that flight? Head, uh, head there, or are you going to stay here, Pat? Well, if they'd let me, I'd go. Would you go? I'd go populate it, yeah. Yeah, no, I'd stay here. I would let you go. Oh, but I thanks. would ask you to hit me back on Facebook every so often and let me know how it's going. <laughs> Yeah, I'll let you know what it's uh, like on the way out there. <laughs> but anyway, in the next couple of days, when you hear uh, Kilo 2, Charlie Alpha Mike, K2 Cam, uh, from Garden City, New York. So there's no reason for you not to hear this station, guys. You should be able to hear this on every band. Uh, they're going to be on 20 meters. They're going to be on 40 meters. You'll be good on 40. Um but anyway, the 1969 Apollo 11, that station will be on the air. So be listening for that. And it gets better from here, Pat. Not only the Apollo 11 moon landing station, but Kiska, the one that DX Engineering was talking about here a while back. You know, they sent these guys over to Kiska to open Kiska up this year. That is the expedition that celebrates the 80th anniversary of the Japanese invasion is it the Aleutian Islands? Is yeah, that how that's yeah. pronounced? Yep. Okay. Well, this is a big deal. And and uh, some of the operators are going to be uh, Russian that, that are going to be at, at this Kiska deal. But we sent, uh, we sent uh, people over there to open up Kiska. You know, some of these stations, folks, uh, these are places where there are no ham radio operators generally. And so if you're going to talk to these places, you have to hit them while there is someone there. Otherwise, it, it's probable, or it's at least possible, that that uh, you may go the rest of your lifetime with nobody back at that location again. So on this kind of stuff, uh, you've got to hop on this when it's there. Uh, this one just sounds cool. This was one from out in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which, by the way, Wisconsin is an easy station, or an easy state, rather, for us here in Ohio, uh, especially my station for some reason. I don't have any trouble hitting Wisconsin. Uh, but anyway, the Warbirds of America are on, and uh, and the Warbird station is going to be uh, Whiskey Nine Whiskey. So when you hear W nine W out there on the air, you'll know that's the Airbirds, and uh, or the Warbirds rather uh, of America. So they're going to be on forty through ten. So we'll see if we can get some ten meter activity going on that one. And then this one here, this this interested me very much, Pat. The, I don't know, I, I personally don't know anybody that served in the Coast Guard, but I know you do, I'm, I'm sure you do. There's gotta be somebody in our clubs uh, that, that was in the Coast Guard. But the 232nd anniversary of Coast Guards, uh, they got a special event station coming on out of Washington State. So you'll wanna try to catch them on 20 or 15 if you can. Uh, and that's gonna be station Kilo One Golf Charlie. K1GC, and so be listening for them out on the air. They go on the air August 4th. So in the next few days, there are going to be some fantastic stations on the air. And the other thing, Pat, is I went by the POTA website, and we are loaded with POTAs right now. I, I remember back during 13 colonies, it was like for every one of the colonies that, that was on the air at any given time, there were two or three POTA stations right on either side of the, yep. the 13 colony station. And uh, this is summertime and the guys are out there in the parks and the gals too. I talked to a gal last week that was opening a park over in New York state on an island just off the coast of New York. And so uh, she did an, out by, boy, by the way, she did an outstanding job 
this uh, female operator, and boy, did she have a pileup of people wanting to talk with her. If you want a pileup, Pat, just put a gal on the uh, Oh, station. yeah, I've always people known have that. A pile up. If you want your... I don't know why that is. If you want big points in field day, that's the way to do it. You put a woman on a on a field day station, you'd be amazed at how many people will talk to her. Hat, shame on you. It's you always that. been that way. It's always <laughs> been that way. That's great. Well, there's gals in ham radio too, guys, just so you know. Oh, and uh, I just saw this. Where did I put it? I put a cop. Oh, here it is. This came in uh, yesterday. Did you get your QST? Nope. Okay, well, it's coming. This is, by the way, this is the, let me see if I can get this on here. This guy is holding the calm umbrella. That, you see how he's got a HP attached to that thing? Yeah. And these girls, they, 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 they just think he's a goofball. But there he is holding his calm antenna. That, that, uh, that's a, that's an antenna. That's a two meter antenna that he's walking with. It's got an umbrella on the top of it. <laughs> so that's the, that's the calm. Well, I'll tell you, that's not too far fetched if you think about it. Because what are you those, know it could be what useful, are, what are those veins made out of? I don't know. I'm going to have to read the article. I'll, I'll if you bet look the, real hard, you can see at the top, though. You, you see right here? Let me point to it. He has, an, he has, a, uh, he has an, a choke. <laughs> but the, He made an air bail, and he, he put a choke on that thing, so he's not going to get common mode down here in the Bay of Fang. Uh, this is the UV-5 right here. Yep. You know, the, the, but yeah. if, you, if you think about it, what are the veins that hold that, that cloth out made of? I'll oh, bet metal. they're I'll bet they're metal, and I'll bet they are. I'll bet you I'll, I'll bet you they're cut. They may be cut to a, a certain size, and I'll bet they're they're becoming a ground plane for that. I'll bet that'd be a hell of an antenna. Well, actually, they they make this antenna. Uh, what is that? What what are those called? Are those called? Uh, they're not cobweb antennas. What is the one people put them up on top of the roan poles and stuff, and and they look like a big umbrella aimed up at space. And uh, they're an HF antenna. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I've seen a couple of them. If I weren't having a senior moment, I could tell you what they are. In fact, somebody will tell us anyway. I'll get an email. But uh, they've got a they got a cool antenna build of the QST this time. This is the this is actually a six meter antenna, and it just kind of looks like a V, and you set it right down on the ground. And uh, this is called a Hen Delta antenna. And uh, I went today to the world's happiest place, which is all, you think that's Disney, right? That's not Disney, that's the Home Depot. So I went to the world's happiest place and I got the supplies. And so I'll make a video this week of me building the, uh, the, the hen. So you and went to, H -E today you went to the happiest place and the second happiest place, huh? Yeah, right. You exactly. went to DX, DX Engineering, too. That's the well, second Well, now half. that's true, too. I did go and spend more money at DX Engineering <laughs> this week. If uh, K3LR is listening, my dude, uh, you have all my money. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing left and, right now to give you. And he's you smiling I, all I the way to the bank. <laughs> so just remember me, okay? When, when uh, you pass on one of these days, I, I want to see something there in your will, okay? He's he's laughing right now because it's funny. They did review the new uh, the new mobile from uh, Yesu, and you know when it comes to mobile radios, Icom makes a pretty good radio. But when it comes to mobiles or handy talkies, Yesu has everybody else, including Icom, beat hands down. They got the greatest mobiles in the world right now. And one other thing that is near and dear to my heart, uh, they did a piece on here on activating lighthouses. And in fact, this one here is on activating the loneliest lighthouse in the world. Where is that? I'll tell you this, it's on Lake Superior. What is the name of it? Sorry, you'll have to read that for yourself. I'm not gonna share that with you. Grab your QST and, and get your nose in this thing and read about ham radio. That's what this thing is for. And this is just one of the real reasons to support the ARRL. I did have a guy at lunch tell me today, though. Today was the six-meter lunch, Pat. I had a guy tell me that uh, that magazine is just nothing but ads. And I said, really? I said, did you see the Lighthouse article? No. I said, did you see the article about the six-meter antenna build? No. But it's just ads. 
and so I liken that to uh, the guy that says the bands are dead. And I say, well, when was the last time you threw your call sign out? Oh, well, I, I, I don't do that. All right. So all the rest of us are supposed to know that you're there, right? Because I can read minds. So, you know, it's all a matter of attitude, folks. Ham radio is like anything else. It's what you choose to make out of it. So there you go. Hey, we've got some, and I'm speaking here, of course, when I'm talking to Pat, to the king of ham fest. This guy throws one of the most successful ham fests each and every year here in Northeast Ohio at the uh, Cuyahoga Falls Club. Everybody's still talking about that ham fest, by the way. <laughs> I had a guy say to me the other day, he said, do you know there was no coffee there? And uh, <laughs> it's just a joke. Actually, what he said is he said, well, you know, I've got this piece of gear. I got this up at the Cuyahoga Falls Ham Fest. He said, wasn't that a great ham fest? And I said, yes, it was. It's always one of the best. But uh, here's some other good ones coming up. Uh, the 6th of August is going to be the ham fest down in Columbus. And that is the one in Grove City. I have talked to a number of people that go to Grove City every year. And they say that's one of the best ham fests there is. That's going to be down at the, uh, 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 yeah, Grove City, Ohio. It's the Aladdin Shrine Audio Unit. That's the, the sponsor of it, uh, uh, ARRL Hamfest. Then on the 13th of August is Cincinnati down in Owensville. And that one is sponsored by the Milford ARC. For those of you over in our eastern uh, portion of the state, the Warren Ham Fest uh, is coming up on the 21st of August, uh, Pat. That is the uh, the Warren ARA tailgate swap. So they're going to do like Mansfield did. I have a couple pictures of Mansfield here in a few minutes that we'll see. Uh, some of the fellows went over there this year. It was a real good ham fest. Then one of the big ones every year uh, comes up in September, on September 11th, Finley. And uh, most everybody around here goes to Finley. The Mound Amateur Radio Association has their ham fest on the 17th, and that is Miamisburg. And uh, that is more of a swap uh, fest type thing they've got going on down there, but it's always well attended. And then uh, on the 25th, at the end of uh, September, Pat, up in Cleveland, they're going to have the uh, Berea, the Cleveland. Yeah, Berea is always a good fest. Yeah, well attended. The big one is on the 30th of October, and that is the Massillon Amateur Radio Club Sam Fest at MAPS, the Military uh, Air Museum at the Canton Akron Airport. So make sure you put October 30th on your calendar. We've got people who have notified us that are actually flying their planes in this year to uh, join us at the Ham Fest, which is pretty cool. And also, I have a picture coming up of a new addition to uh, MAPS. It won't be open for the public to tour, but it's going to be there. And uh, this this plane just came to us to maps from uh, down from over in Mansfield. So we'll talk about that in just a second. It might interest you to know before we get started, Pat, that uh, I had some cards come in this last week. No, some of you them didn't. Came in electronically. <laughs> How in the heck do you so, get all these cards? A couple of them are pretty bland there at the beginning, but there's some pretty cool ones too. So we can run through this here real quick and not be leaguer uh, the Hang point on, I gotta waste find anybody's it. time. But uh, hey, I think I'm all alone. <laughs> uh, just uh, hang with me a minute. I gotta. The lights went out in my room, Pat, and I can't see a thing. I got to find that thing. Hang on. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, there we go. Okay. Here's number one. That's I know, is there pretty, somewhere? pretty bland card. But, uh, you know, some of the ones that come in electronically aren't so hot. But this was uh, Norm. Uh, Kilo Charlie won. Bravo, Mike uh, Delta, and he is over in Kittery Point, Maryland, uh, Maine, I think. Yeah, Maine? Isn't that Maine? Yeah, Maine. And uh, talk to him on 20 meters. The next guy down is Kilo 2 Charlie. That's Christopher over in Rhode Island. In case you were asking, are there any ham radio operators in Rhode Island? The answer to your question is, yeah, there's at least one. And he is on was on an ICOM 7600, and he was using a uh, Alpha Delta dipole. And boy, did he sound great! He was he was solid there in Massillon, in Ohio. This next fellow uh, down is one of these uh, one of these uh, A guys, Alpha Bravo uh, uh, One, Oscar Charlie, and Fred is over in New Hampshire. And look at that beautiful card. 
So they get some snow in New Hampshire, just like we get some snow here. He was running an ICOM 7800. Are you familiar with that radio? No. Yeah, that's, a, that's an expensive radio, Pat. That's one of those that's 200 water know. contest jobbers, you know? That's why I don't know anything about it. Right, I understand. Me too. It makes and, me. Uh, anyway, he was on a dipole. Everybody that has a great signal is on a dipole. You know, this is all very instructive. If you read your QSL cards, folks, when they come in, look to see what antenna the other guys were on and make a note in your log of who sounded great and then go back at, uh, and match it up. You're going to find that nine out of ten times, the guy was just on a dipole. It's like our our, uh, our Elmer, Pat Morrow there says, you can talk the whole world on 100 watts in a wire. So exactly. a wire, it's always the best antenna. I don't understand. Then I talked to the Orange County Amateur Radio Club out there in Orange, California, the OC, Pat, where they have all the money. These people out there in California have more money than God. And uh, so I had a chance <laughs> to talk to Orange on the uh, Swan 400, and uh, that was fun. That was during a contest. This next guy just cracked me up, or the next uh, group of people. W2AMA, when I looked at that, I kind of do what you do, Pat, where you, you do people's call signs in your head. First thing I thought of was the American Medical Association when I saw that. Yep. Actually, there's a club over there called the After Midnight Amateur Radio Association, thus AMA. So I talked to the uh, the uh, AMA people. They were out on a in a place called Belmont Lake. And if you look that up on Google, that is some of the most beautiful scenery I think I've ever seen. And this is over in New York State. And uh, that was K. 2013 for POTA, and I caught up with him on uh, 20 meters. That was a good call. Uh, this next one, I don't know how this got in here, Pat. I did <laughs> I don't, I yeah. must have just touched the wrong button or something when I was loading uh, the signs up. This would never happen at your ham fest, would it? Nope. This, this would, this would never happen. Because I'd out probably PLA, have that right? thing. <laughs> <laughs> this would never happen at a club meeting out in the park, would it? Nah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We sh we need to probably just move right on ahead. I know that that would never happen. No. Here's a Kilo Zero uh, L. What is it? Lima? Lima Alpha Frank. There we go. I had to think about that one for just a second. This is Charles. Uh, Charlie, as he calls himself, is in Republic, Missouri. That's not far from where I grew up. He was on a, a Gaser. And what was he on for an antenna? Did he say? Oh, the antenna was an ATAS 128. Okay, that is not a wire. That's a vertical. Okay, next one down. This fella did it all. He actually used to work for Disney. And uh, you can see the little little inserted uh, area that he's got over there. But uh, this is K7PAP from a beautiful state. And that is a picture that he took as it was happening. Another POTA down here. Whiskey 2, Sierra Mike Fox. Uh, parks on the air. They're everywhere. And I think this next one is the last one. I had put this up on uh, my my uh, webpage, so I had smeared his name out. Uh, I would not have uh, done it here, no need to. But this is Whiskey One Delta Victor, and this is uh, down in Tryson, North Carolina. And this fella is a retired U.S. Navy captain. So 73, Dave, it was good to talk to you down in Polk County. You got a great station. And I like the American flag. That uh, That's a big deal. Now we got a picture of the sky. This is a picture of a C-130. And this plane is used, uh, it was used to transport both troops and equipment. And this is the newest edition at MAPS where the Massel and Hamfest is this year. And uh, this came to us from Mansfield, Ohio. All the C-130s, I guess, are gone from Mansfield now. And so this one is gonna make its permanent home pat at the Canton Akron Airport at MAPS. Oh, cool. Now, these next pictures, yeah, isn't that awesome? These next pictures are the Mansfield Prunk Fest that just occurred. And uh, there's some folks out there. Uh, you can just kind of scroll through those. It looks like a typical Trunk Fest. The one cool thing about a Trunk Fest is you can just back your car up there. See how those guys down at the end there just kind of threw the back up on their, uh, on their vans and whatnot? And it's like your mobile showroom that you take with you everywhere you go. Here's some guys looking for that, which they did not know that they needed. And that's what Amfests are all about. That's some old timey gear there. This particular picture that's coming up next, Pat, stop there for a second. This is uh, 
this is the Alliance Club. The Alliance ARC, as you know, they auctioned that IC7300 that you're seeing sitting there off this year. And uh, they do that every year. They've got a radio they put up for auction. And they have been offering those tickets at Hamfest all over the region. And in fact, they were down at uh, Hamvention also, and they were uh, offering those tickets down there. It's a lady named Janice, by the way, who won. You're looking at the, uh, and I thought this was really ingenious. You're looking at the winning ticket right now being drawn live on social media. And I thought, boy, isn't that a great idea? Nobody can say anything. They can't say, well, this contest was rigged. You can't say that because there are the guys, you know, and it was obvious they weren't cheating. There they are pulling the ticket out. And, and so I thought that was pretty smart on their part and well done. And uh, because of that IC7300 that you're seeing sitting there, that club raised uh, $1,200 for uh, charity in the Alliance area. So good job, everybody who bought a ticket and took part in uh, that particular promotion. That is their club fundraiser uh, each and every year. This next one down here, and I forget the name of this place, but let me tell you what happened. This just happened here about a week and a half or two weeks ago, Pat. When we were down at Hamvention this year, this was this place where you're seeing this devastation was 60 miles south of Xenia. So at, when we were at Hamvention, this was 60 miles south of where we were standing. But they had a, a, a something, is it an E2 or an F2 uh, tornado came through? Extended, this was a week and a half ago or two weeks ago, I think. It actually and, stands uh, for extended Fujita or an EF is what they're using now. Oh. Oh, well, and get listen to how this went down. So this tornado hits the town. And guess what it hits first, Pat? The first, very first thing that it hits is the fire station. And it takes the fire and the EMS out. And then it systematically destroyed the rest of the town. It must have thought and it so, was a trailer. <laughs> it just, it's just crazy. What are the odds that it would hit the fire station first? Uh, just look at that. The town is gone. And yeah. this is uh, this underscores the stuff, uh, Pat, that your group does with the Stormwatch and Summit County. This is a big deal. Well, speaking of that, and mind if I do a quick plug? Go ahead. A week from uh, tomorrow night, on uh, we will be on Zoom. We're also uh, we'll be live at the uh, at um, the uh, Pilgrim Church Pilgrim. I think it's the First Pilgrim Church of Christ on uh, Broad Boulevard in Cuyahoga Falls. It's 130 Broad Boulevard. <clears throat> um, we're gonna. I'm going to do a Skywarn talk. Um, okay. Basically, I'm going to cover the stuff that uh, that you will uh, need in order to make reports on, uh, to me on my nets and stuff like that. We're going to cover mm -hmm. the do's and don'ts. We're also going to. I'm going to try to go into a little bit of how to formulate and how to figure out if something's going to happen. So um, I've got a, the ideas in my head. I just got to throw it all together in slides. But uh, it'll be about, the talk will be about an hour, a little over. And uh, when you get done, hopefully I will have educated you enough that uh, you'll, if you do see something, you'll know what to report and how to report it. So, but uh, that's my little You know, well, you should consider doing that sometime and uh, live streaming it putting it up on YouTube or somewhere to where we can all dial in and see it if we can't be in that area. Well, that's, what, people, that's why we're going to do it on Zoom. That's why we're doing it on Zoom. Oh, it is on Zoom. Yes, it'll be on Zoom. If okay, go, I did. I missed out on that part, so thank you, go you for to clarifying Park, that. If you go to cpark.org, uh, it'll be the, the uh, July 27th meeting. And okay, so guys, that is C-F-A-R-C, Charlie Fox, Alpha, Radio, Charlie, cpark.org. Right. Okay, and what night is this again, Pat? This will be Wednesday, the 27th of, Jan of July. Yeah, and there's another meeting. There's one coming up. Well, there was one this afternoon. There's one coming up on Thursday down here in Stark County. I'll go ahead and put a plug in for that. This is the training session coming up uh, for the Hall of Fame Parade, Pat. So uh, they're going to be meeting at the uh, at the the Stark Parks 
uh, building there on 12th Street uh, Northwest in Canton. And uh, at any rate, uh, again, Thursday is Thursday afternoon at four. The Hall of Fame, if you want to help with the Hall of Fame parade in Canton this year, that's the meeting to be at. And that starts at four o'clock. And so yours is next Thursday. Next Wednesday. Or oh, next Wednesday, brother. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, and that's awesome that you've got it on Zoom. And so I know that I'll be heading out to the cfarc.org site because I would like to be part of that also, Pat. You're more than welcome here. You're more than welcome to come up to if you want to. Okay, so I hope you guys out there copy of that. That is coming up. Put it on your calendar. You are listening to The World According to Elmer. On the Crooked River Radio Network, I am Jerry, K-G-8-R-R-Y, and that is our Elmer, who is hiding right now, but he's here, in 8 qp Mr. Pat Morrow. Pat, last week, it just seems like we got a theme going on here tonight, we were talking space. And then, get this, DX Engineering Show comes on, I, it was either on, two, I think it was on Thursday or Friday of last week, and they had two kids on there that chase satellites that have all the equipment and they talk to the satellites as they go on overhead. I thought, well, we got a real space theme going on here in Northeast Ohio. But we had a treat the other night. We had uh, like for two nights in a row, Pat, I want to say Thursday and Friday, if I remember correctly, we had some three star passes That's exactly of the right. ISS, That's the International exactly. Space Station. And so I'm just going to turn it over to you and uh, tell us uh, tell us about uh, your interaction last week with the ISS. Well, because of that video we watched last week, it got me thinking that maybe I could take and uh, see if I can hit that thing myself. <clears throat> now, I'm my station is not uh, I've not set up for tracking satellites or anything like that. I've got a, a diamond, uh, 24 foot diamond antenna dual band that's up on the roof. <clears throat> I've got uh, um, a uh, ICOM IC5100, and okay. uh, I've got basically basic radios. You know the, uh, um, and I I knew it was fairly easy because when you can stand in a in a parking lot of a uh, town hall with an HT and a, a an antenna that's about that long, uh, two or three feet long and hit a satellite for four or five minutes, you could, something like my station should be able to get it. Well, that's a very nice diamond antenna. I've seen it, and that is certainly capable. So I, the the, uh, the night that um, I decided, I actually decided to try it first and see if I could hit it. Well, I, of course, I had to go to the video that we played to, to get the frequencies to put in. Right. <clears throat> and we had to take in the, uh, Put the uh, do all the necessary setups. I had to go in and program the radio for it, and right. um, you had to go in. I think it's sixty. You had to put the sixty-seven uh, tone on the uh, on the output or on the transmitter, and there was uh, there's actually eight different frequencies. I only had six at the time. I've got seven now, but there's eight different frequencies that you use. To adjust for the Doppler shift. Now, okay. If it, anybody, what is the Doppler that, shift? anybody that's ever uh, taken a taken a test for ham radio knows that this question is on there. And what the Doppler shift is is if if you're looking, you're sitting at the, beside a uh, beside a train track. This okay. is. A, I'm going to give you an example of this. If you're sitting beside a a, 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 a train track. And a train's coming, and it's coming at a fairly, fairly decent speed, and it gets louder and louder and louder and louder, and right as it passes you, it starts getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. That's the Doppler shift. Okay. That is actually, that is actually what you're hearing. You're hearing the shift in frequencies of the sound waves. That's basically what that is. Well, the same thing applies when you when you go with uh, radio frequencies and and a moving object like is in space. As soon as it gets up on top of you, it starts fading off and fading off and fading off until it disappears altogether. 
<clears throat> and I was amazed. I had never really tried to track something like that before. <clears throat> the, the amazing thing was, I didn't know where to put the... I started out with them in the middle of the frequencies. And when I heard it, I went and uh, I started shifting the dop or the, the frequencies around. Um, yeah, back and forth. Back and forth to see where it was. And it finally came up and it, it got loud. Then I started keying up my radio on a or on the on the uh, two meter side, and I could start hearing myself going through it. Nice. I heard myself really clear one time, and then I had two different guys come back to me. They, of course, stuff is happening so fast there, and you've only got six minutes, and everybody and their brother is trying to get on there. But right. I had somebody confirm my call and actually give me his call. <clears throat> and then, it, of course, it faded off by that time. I've noticed that the biggest, as far as my antenna was concerned, the biggest, or the, I could hear it coming, but once it got overhead, there was no mistake, and that's what it was. You'll hear that in the, in the clip we're going to play. And then okay. as it got further away on the other side, it got a little bit stronger before it got weaker and ended up out of not being able to hear it. It's a little on the noisy side as far as the, the recording that I got, but you'll be able to, you'll really be able to tell, you know. Couple of, uh, couple of questions before you start the clip. Number one, this is FM, am I correct? Yes, this is all FM. Okay, and in order to hear the space station, I think I heard, or I think I understood, your squelch has to be wide open. From start to finish, so pretty, you're listening pretty to much, yeah, and everything. pretty much, pretty much, yes. Okay, you could probably squelch it once you started hearing it, but then again, your squelch is going to affect it if it drops below the squelch, which it's yes. very likely to do. So you just leave the squelch open. It's only, it's only a five or six minute pass. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna rip your ears up or anything like that. I'm so halfway you took a video anyway. of the radio while this was going on, right? Right, right. And the frequency, wait to see it. The frequency, the downlink, is a 430, 437, 8, and then or, it starts at four four thirty seven seven ninety, and it goes okay. uh, goes up to eight fifteen. You'll see that in the clip. We ready to do this? Okay. I actually did. Uh, if anybody's listening from the the radioactive show the other night, this is uh, the clip I was talking about over there. I did a build in to. Uh, to our show over here for that. So hopefully you know, we've got a couple extra listeners and watchers. Let's go ahead and play this. I'll, uh, we'll be back to talk Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Talk us through this thing, Pat. All right. We're about probably a minute or so from the actual acquisition of this. If you watch what I've just done there, There was the ID. No 
November 8, Ocean Queen Papa, EM91. Romeo 3 Victor, Fox Jedi. November 8, Ocean Queen Papa. You can hear me coming through it now. Boy, that is great. We're just about at the end. That is really great, Pat. He, there he called me. Yeah. Except it was backwards. Oscar o <laughs> Oscar Ocean Queen. There you go. That was another one. Yeah. Oh, this is great. So there was three of them. Yeah, how do you feel about this at this point? That's awesome. Some of the best. I mean, you, you had to be on top of the world, right? Some of the most radio fun I've had in a long time. Yeah. I think there's only about. This should be coming up, up towards the end. I make sure that he's pretty much passed out. out. Yeah, it's out of VAC. Okay. Boy, that is good stuff. Uh, you have to be really happy with how that and turned out. My little experiment. I actually had three people come back to me. If you, you heard that. Uh, hopefully you heard it. Yeah, well, that so, was, that was the most radio you, fun I've had in a long time. Have you sent out some QSL cards yet? <laughs> Not yet. I presume you are. That yeah. Contacts. I probably. I will probably. Were you, were I you like dancing around the shack and, and, and carrying on and all that stuff? This actually, I couldn't do too much of that because this was like 1130 at night. 
<laughs> everybody upstairs was in bed. I went up. Well, and that's I went upstairs and, and uh, <laughs> I told the wife as I was getting into bed, I just hit space station. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> Guess who I just talked to? Well, and you know, here's the thing. We had those great passes come through. Now, if you look at the passes today, uh, they're going on still this evening. They'll go on all night long. But look at the passes. They're awful. These yeah. are all one-star passes tonight. And and trust me when I tell you, if you see a one-star pass, you're not you're not going to uh, you're not going to be talking to the. Uh, this is actually it's the software that I found for my for my phone. This is uh, actually called ISS detector, and this is what. Uh, it gives you two different two different screens. It gives you the one on the left here, and then it gives you this uh, topographical thing. Yes. Most of it, for the most part, has been pretty accurate. The nice part of it is when you turn the app on, up in the upper left hand corner, it tells you when the next pass is going to be. So it's it's pretty slick. I myself am I'm pondering the idea of just buying a. Uh, Getting myself a two meter four forty beam, or or even crafting myself one for that matter, <clears throat> and uh, seeing if I can do a little bit better with this. And well, tonight, like for instance, you know the this uh, now you're using uh, the ISS detector. Now the thing here on my iPhone that I use is called the ISS spotter, and like tonight it it shows this pass. Well, you can see on this pass coming through at like midnight tonight. That that when you see when you see you see the ISS entering and leaving at almost the same spot. Yeah. What that means is there's not much elevation. It's right on the horizon the whole time, and it just makes like a lazy and, loop, and they're gone. And your so chances of you're getting looking, that are slim and none. Pretty pretty slim. Now could it happen? Maybe, but you 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 increase your chances the higher it is in the sky. Like the pass that came through on Friday night was 53 degrees. 53 degrees, it's right up at the top of the sky, and so you have a good chance of trying to get it. Um, did you find that the Doppler effect is a real phenomenon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In greatly? If you watched that video, we went from uh, uh, 810 down to 795 before. Yes. We, and I kept switching. This It never really got to 790. But it, it kept floating between 795 and 800. Now, Doppler effect has to do with reception and not transmission. That's, that's that true. Correct? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So this is just your ability to hear who's replying to you uh, that the Doppler really, really figures into. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, as far as transmission is concerned, you're just throwing it up there. I had a friend a few years ago that talked with the ISS uh, when there were actually astronauts talking to people, and he was on nothing more than a Yesu handy talkie with a rubber ducky on a sidewalk in Los Angeles, California. I believe that. So it's amazing, you know. They have the when you think about it with FM. What is the most important thing about an FM signal? Height, and then there's height, and then there's height. How high you can get that in antenna up in the air, that's the that's the thing. It's not so much wattage, it has more to do with the antenna and the height. And you figure the ISS has the highest antenna at anywhere. But when you were talking right there uh, to the uh, to the repeater on the ISS, you were literally, Pat, talking to half of the world. Yep. Anybody had half cool? of the world <laughs> to hear you. Yeah, isn't that that's cool? Crazy. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. For just a moment, you were the most powerful man on earth. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you could have made an announcement that would have been heard by half of the world. That's just incredible. That uh, that's also amazing that I did that on fifty watts. Yeah. You know, if I would have had a little more concentrated signal, I probably would have did a did a little bit better into it. But, I don't know. Three people replying to you? I don't think that was bad. I yeah. think that was a good guess. I think that was sweet. I think that was sweet. Yeah. Well, I congratulate you, and uh, I'm proud to know you. That's awesome. Good <laughs> job. And uh, hopefully all of the people that we have uh, watching our show tonight or in the week to come uh, will we'll catch the bug 
and they'll decide that they're going to get out there and get on the uh, repeater on the ISS for themselves. So, you know, we had a whole video tonight on talking to the astronauts and the astronauts talking here to uh, ham radio operators here on this Earth. And we're not going to have time to run it tonight because it's a 20 minute long video. And we have talked uh, the entire hour away, which is not unusual. I don't know. We, for started us. At, we started at 10 after. Okay, so we got 10 minutes to we go. Got about 10 you minutes. want to go ahead and and, uh, and put the video in? Yeah, we can. Okay, what let's go ahead and do it, guys. Let's, let's, we... let's thrill everybody. <laughs> Yeah, let's do. Let's go ahead and run it. This is The World According to Elmer on the Crooked River Radio Network. I'm Jerry, KG8RRY. That is uh, that is our Elmer sitting right there that talked to the ISS uh, and talked to three people uh, on the uh, from the ISS repeater in 8 OQP, Mr. Pat Morrow. So let's roll this video, Pat, and we'll come back and talk on the other side. Expedition 25 Commander Doug Wheelock gave a tour of the Russian segment of the orbiting complex, including the Soyuz spacecraft docked there. Wheelock showed off the station's ham radio using the call sign NA1SS to talk with people on the ground as the station flies overhead at 17,500 miles per hour. Wheelock and flight engineers Shannon Walker and Fyodor Yuchikin all will return home to Earth this Thursday, November 25th. Welcome aboard. It's a pleasure to have you aboard today, and uh, I wanted to show you a little bit about our ham radio operations on board. I've, the last several months and weeks, uh, I've really enjoyed using the ham radio and uh, talking to ham radio operators all over the world. The, most of our contacts are, are normally, I find, over North America, uh, Mexico, then into uh, Central America, and even in the Caribbean. I've had a few contacts uh, through South America and also in Africa. And then again, over Europe, uh, we have several contacts that we've made over Europe and then also in Australia and Japan. And tonight, uh, you're in for a real treat. Uh, we're getting ready to have a pass over North America. This, this pass will actually be entering uh, U.S. airspace right around the mid coast of, uh, of Oregon, the state of Oregon, uh, just a little south of Portland and we'll be flying over the central part of the U.S. and sort of exiting uh, U.S. Um, airspace, if you will, um, right around Brownsville, Texas, and uh, going into Mexico over the Yucatan uh, Peninsula, so we'll get some contacts. I've had several contacts in, uh, in Cuba, and that's been a lot of fun. Got a lot of great friends there. And, uh, and we'll go down over South America, and you'll see how the, um, how the uh, contacts taper out as we enter uh, uh, into the South American um, airspace. And uh, I just wanted to share this with you because it's been a lot of fun. We, we um, get a chance to look out the window uh, uh, quite often, and we try to do that each day. And, um, but using the ham radio, it's a little more uh, sparse the times I get to do that uh, because you have, you have to be kind of time the, uh, your, your pass over the area where you want to make the contacts. And, um, and during the work day, that's difficult to do when we've got uh, a lot of work going on down here in the U.S. segment. And the uh, ham radio is located in the Russian service module, which is the F part of the uh, space station. And um, so lining that up with, with some free time and some time when people uh, where we're calling would be awake as well, since we operate off of Greenwich uh, Mean Time, I have to remember that uh, we're six, uh, seven, eight, ten hours, nine, ten hours ahead of, uh, of times in the U.S. And so to make contacts there, usually it falls out that's during my evening uh, time either during pre-sleep or even into sleep time. Don't tell uh, our flight directors. But um, it's been a lot of fun and it's a, it's a uh, Sunday evening and um, it's getting uh, uh, on into the afternoon in the States. And so we should have a lot of contacts today on a weekend. And so I want you to, uh, to enjoy this. Now, there, is, there are some challenges to, um, uh, to using the ham radio on board. And um, I think it gets frustrating for the ground, uh, for the folks on the ground as well, because uh, they're making a very, what they feel is a very clear transmission uh, to the space station. And uh, then sometimes I don't hear the entire call sign, don't hear the entire transmission. And so it's difficult for me to, um, to give them a call back. And I know that's hard to understand, but I'll, I'll, I want you to experience this to see, because when we enter US airspace, I'll just leave them, I'll just leave the mic off on the ham radio, and I want you to listen. They'll start calling the station um, uh, before we even get to the coastline. And um, usually on the West Coast, those early callers that we get, um, I'll get a clear signal and we'll get the entire call sign. 
and then you'll hear the barrage of uh, of call signs. It's sort of it's sort of like a uh, an alphabet soup. You hear you hear letters and numbers coming up, and different voices from different states and different regions, and uh, they're all coming up at the same time. And so it it, it uh, becomes a conglomeration of uh, of uh, alphanumeric uh, codes that you have to try to decipher, and it, you get better with it with time. Uh, but when I first started out, I was I was a little overwhelmed at the barrage of uh, of um, call signs coming in and how to how to more most efficiently pick out the call signs and then uh, and then make those contacts. And of course, a a great contact is that I hear their call sign and I call them back with our call sign um, that I have them loud and clear aboard the space station. And our call sign here on the on the space station is November Alpha One Sierra Sierra. So you'll hear, you'll hear that coming over the, uh, the airways. So November Alpha One Sierra Sierra, Sierra or NA One SS. You'll hear that. Um, sometimes people will say uh, call just for the International Space Station. Uh, you may hear that as well. So, um, and then uh, what I've been trying to do is, uh, if I get a partial call sign, I'll. Uh, uh, it's normally a string of a string of numbers and letters, usually one number in there. And um, if I only hear the last couple of numbers or a couple of numbers in the call sign, I'll repeat those couple of numbers and say that I missed the first part of the call sign or the second, uh, last part of the call sign and have them uh, call back. So normally that will uh, whittle it down and sometimes uh, uh, folks will, will kind of back off a little bit and allow that, um, allow that uh, ground station to, to uh, retransmit um, that signal. So a lot of times on the, if I get a couple of letters and I repeat those back, that uh, folks will use courtesy and uh, allow that uh, station to try to make contact again. And usually on that second or third time, I'll get that full call sign and be able to complete that contact. And so uh, this will be a lot of fun. We're going to head down to the service module, and um, I think you'll really enjoy this. So come on along. We're coming into the uh, to node one out of the airlock, and uh, we'll head down to the uh, to the Russian service module down to the uh, to the uh, aft end of the uh, space station. So we'll come come through here and uh, and uh, watch watch your head coming into PMA one and uh, please watch your speed. The speed limit here is seventeen thousand five hundred miles per hour, and uh, it is checked by radar. Uh. So here we go. Coming up into PMA one, and this we have, use this for a lot of storage. Uh, we have a lot of our clothing and things, uh, uh, hygiene products uh, stored in here. And uh, coming into the uh, to the Russian segment here, and um, down at the deck level and going nadir towards to be towards the Earth. Um, in this location is the is the MIM one, the MRM, the Mini Research Module. And you can see down there, way down at the other end of the of the MIM, is our Soyuz Olympus, uh, which we will get into. We can see all the way down into the um, there's our hatch actually. Um, down into the Soyuz, and um, actually that's Fyodor down there uh, working uh, to get the capsule ready for our departure. And um, that's where the Soyuz, uh, that's where we docked the Soyuz uh, back uh, several months ago. So there's the meme one, and then coming from the, uh, uh, the pressurized adapter here, mating adapter, we come into the FGB, or the functional cargo block of the um, of the space station of the Russian segment. We're now in the Russian segment, and, uh, and um, the functional cargo block is, is just that. It's a uh, it's a lot of a lot of cargo, a lot of systems in here. And see, these are all food containers uh, that we have, and these are also um, some supplies and um, and spare parts for uh, uh, for both of the uh, the bathrooms on board. And um, those are located in here as well. That's Behind important. each of these panels along the wall, um, you can pull those panels off, and there's there are systems uh, back there as well, systems and storage of different different items. So we come through the uh, through the FGB, we just kind of float through the tunnel here, and we'll come up on the um, on the pressurized mating adapter between the FGB and the service module. Actually, part of part of the service module and. Um, and uh, we'll look Nader first, and Nader takes us into the docking compartment. And um, in the docking compartment are, is where the um, Russian EVAs are launched from. You can see the um, the Orlan spacesuits 
that are hanging on the wall. There's uh, there's Fyodor's uh, spacesuit and then uh, and then Oleg's spacesuit that they wore on these last uh, couple of EVAs. And um, and then down down here through this hatch is one of our progress vehicles. Uh, that was a resupply vehicle that docked at the latest. It's Progress 40, uh, 40P there that brought us uh, resupplies. And uh, that's docked uh, Nader uh, at the at the Nader end of the uh, docking compartment. So turning Zenith now, and we look uh, we're looking Zenith. We got the MRM2, the MIM2, the uh, little uh, the mini research module uh, that points. Uh, towards deep space is actually on the native, uh, Zenith side of the space station and um, and Soyuz 24S the Soyuz that uh, that uh, Sasha and Scott and Oleg came up in in October is parked at the um, at the Zenith end of the mean too so you can see all the way down into the Soyuz and there's uh, there's actually the commander seat inside of the Soyuz 24S we'll continue down now into the service module uh, where the ham radio is located. This is also the the uh, central post of the um, of the space station, the command the command post. And uh, coming into the service module, this is the well, the central post here where we uh, where we gather in the in the event of an emergency. We also gather down here from time to time uh, for meals. We try to eat meals uh, each uh, each night as a crew. And we're coming up on the um, on the uh, ham radio now, and this is the um, actually the uh, the map that we use for our pass. And you can see uh, this is uh, this is our track. This is actually a program called Sigma, and you can see the red dot there. It's coming up on the Oregon coast, and so we'll be ready to pick up with our uh, with our conversations with our ham radio friends here in just a few moments. And here's the ham radio, just on the uh, on the starboard wall of the uh, of the space station, located here. And um, of course, the antenna is out outside. We got a pretty powerful transmitter and receiver as well. Okay, we're here in the service module of the Russian segment, and uh, this is the command post of the uh, space station. We're going to go ahead and turn on the ham radio, and I'll have the microphone uh, sort of near the uh, speaker so you can hear the calls coming in again. We're in November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, or NA1SS. And we're coming up on the Oregon coast now. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn the radio on. And I'll let you listen to our transmissions as we, as we go over the US. NA1SS, NA1SS. You can hear the calls come. It'd be cool if you heard November me. This is Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, <laughs> the International Space Station, over. I got, a, I got a, uh, I got a call from Craig. And Craig, uh, say your call sign again, please. Yes, November six, Radio Sierra X-ray. November six, Radio Sierra X-ray. Over, over. Okay, November six, Radio Sierra X-ray. We've got you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. It's great to talk to you again, Craig. So you can hear a little bit of the static. There's a lot of the calls coming in. So this is what we have to listen to to try to see. I got an EXP. So I heard the Echo X-ray Bravo missed the first part of the call sign, but this is November Alpha One CRC or the International Space Station. Over. Kilo Delta Zero Echo X-ray Victor Sir. Okay, Kilo Delta Zero Echo X-ray Victor. We've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station, November Alpha One CRC. I copied Juliet, Juliet Bravo, missed the first part of the call sign, but this is November Alpha 1, Sierra, Sierra, the International Space Station, over. This is November 0, Kilo Golf Mike. November 0, Kilo Golf Mike, we've got you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station, welcome aboard. Okay, Colonel, very good, uh, nice to make a contact with you again, and uh, hey, just a question, I saw your Twitter profile picture, is that uh, ever a space camp, go ahead? Yeah, it sure is. It's uh, it's Mount Everest, and I uh, went. I was there. That was taken at base camp. Uh, have you been there? Oh yeah, yeah. We've been to base camp a couple of. 
Yeah, it was just such a such a beautiful day and uh, and such a such an incredible shot of uh, of Everest that I wanted to take it there. Um, I had uh, my spacewalking buddy uh, Scott Parazinski from my uh, shuttle flight uh, uh, back a couple of years, uh, three years ago, um, was uh, trying for the summit. I I just was going to base camp and then uh, and then um, uh, just around around base camp there. Calling November Alpha. N zero W A R. This is November Alpha One Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station. Over. Nope. So you can hear a lot of the static. Got a lot of calls coming in, and a lot of them get kind of piled on top of each other. N six R F R F X. We've got you loud and clear aboard the space station. Welcome aboard November Alpha One Sierra Sierra. So you can hear a lot of the static. We're just getting fits of the call sign. Yeah, I, I missed the question over. Yeah, what's the first dinner you're going to have? What's your first meal when you get home there, Doug? Go ahead. First meal, huh? I don't know. Uh, maybe bluebell ice cream uh, with a uh, two pound bag of peanut M&Ms or something. That sounds great. That sounds great. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, I hope you have a great trip home. And uh, really have enjoyed uh, all, the, uh, all the great contact uh, with you uh, on this trip. I'll let others uh, get back in there. Any one SS N6 RSX 73 is Doug. Best of luck. Thank you very much. And N6 RSX, uh, actually, I was sort of kidding about that. I, I'm looking forward to like fresh, just fresh vegetables and fruit is really what I'm looking forward to. I can imagine, I can imagine, uh, and I'm sure you have a list of, uh, of things to do and, uh, and uh, put, uh, with the family and all of that. So uh, best of luck, Doug. Thank you very much. It's been great uh, talking to you. 73 to you. 73 means uh, best wishes. So now you can hear a lot of static. and We do have a squelch so we can control a little bit of that static. Sometimes I'll go off frequency. This is channel one that I'm using now, which is sort of the generic uh, contact channel over North America. See, I missed that one. I heard KI-6 and then missed the se second part of the call sign. This is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station, over. It's getting really jumbled up now, losing a lot of signals. Let's see where we are. We're, we're, Copied Kilo Foxtrot 7, India Oscar, then missed the last letter. This is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station, over. So it's getting really jammed up on channel one. So I'll go, I'll go to a simplex channel, channel five, and usually that's a lot clearer. There we go. We're getting some calls over Mexico. Zero Papa Delta. And Zero Papa Delta got you loud and clear aboard the space station. Welcome aboard. It's great to talk to you again as well. I, I missed the call sign. It got blocked. Could you say again for the space station? Whiskey Zero Papa Delta, W Zero PD. Okay, great. I thought I was missing a letter there. So Whiskey Zero Papa Delta, we've got you loud and clear. It's great to talk to you again aboard the International Space Station. This is Colonel Doug Wheelock and uh, 73 to you. All right, 73. So we're now over, uh, looks like we're over central New Mexico, kind of coming down uh, near Brownsville, kind of paralleling the Rio Grande River. Pretty quiet there tonight, but I'll make a call, make a call to see what, what kind of response we get. This is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station, over. Okay, Colin from Texas. I missed the call sign. This is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station. Over. See how hard it is to hear the... I heard an Oscar, so... 
Okay, I uh, heard an Oscar there, and I missed the first, the whole first part of that call sign, but this is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. I got you the last part of it, loud and clear, aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. We should, we're going to start. Whiskey 5, Sugar, Sugar, Victor. We've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. November Alpha 1, Sugar, Sugar. Whiskey five, sugar, sugar, Victor. I will take you up on that. That's a, that Beaumont. That'll be a short hop for me, and uh, we'll come over and uh, do a little talk for your club and uh, and uh, have some dinner together. That'd be a, that'd be a nice treat for me. Well, we appreciate it, Doug. Uh, excuse me. Dinner will definitely be on us when you get down on the ground. I'll QSL you, and we'll get together. I know our club will be looking forward to it. We've got seven or eight of them out there right now listening, and they've been trying to talk to you. So I'm gonna keep it short. Thank you. Uh, good luck coming home. This is Whiskey 5, Sugar Sugar Victor, KB5 MBJ. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Zulu 5. Great to talk to you. 73 to you. Stop. We had a couple of calls coming in there while I was answering him back. So, so Copy the WA5, but missed the second part. Whiskey Alpha 5, and then I missed the second part of the call sign. This is November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station. Over. Well, there you go. I now, I guess uh, what that tells me, let me bring us back here. What that tells me is that uh, <clears throat> the uh, um, it's as bad his way as it was for me trying to hear him. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, this, these kind of videos, one of the real instructional things that it does for us is it gives us a little bit of a glimpse into what it's like for the other guy. You know, all of us, we sit out here and we just shout at these guys, you know, like the guys that were running the, at the gal, running the 13 colony stations and, and uh, even forget about the station, the space station. That's on a whole nother level. But all these guys that are running these special event stations and, and all of us jerks are out here all trying to talk over each other to get there. And and that's what they hear. They just hear like this this mass of humanity screaming at them on the other end, you know? Yeah. It, it's really a wonder that they can pick out what they do. Yeah, I, I can see that now. Before, you know, it's always cool when you do something like this to, to imagine what it's like from the other side. And right. uh, hearing that, man, that's, I can, I feel 10 times more uh, privileged that I actually made the, what, and did what I did. Uh, well, and I just feel privileged to know a celebrity, Pat, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, come on, Jerry. You're only saying it because it's true. You know, I'll say this for him. <laughs> He did a he did a fantastic job handling all that. You know, I know, I know that goal. he never did, and when he it, just kept it all together the whole time. And when I it just faded, that it was faded, and he that. just moved on. Yeah, exactly, and that's what you would have to do because you've only got a moment. That thing is going. At, you know, that thing moves at five miles a second, so they're not there for very long. And they're gone. So it's speak now or forever hold your peace on that deal. 17,500 so miles an hour. Yeah, it's just pretty crazy. Yeah. And that's almost as bad as Route 77 sometimes. <laughs> so, funny. you know, look, there's a lot of people trying to call in, uh, but he does have the best antenna in the world. And if you can reach it, you can talk to the whole world right there. Yep. So this this was a great uh, show tonight. I, I guess we've got the space fever right now, so we'll see where this continues over the next few weeks. But uh, what a great show this evening. Thanks for telling your story tonight, Pat. It was huh. awesome. I had to tell it. It's a lot of fun. Well, guys, we ran way, way over tonight, and that's normal. So <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah, they're kind we're of only, what, to us at the 15 station minutes now. over? So, <laughs> so, you know, we're not going to worry about it. I'd rather yeah. go over than under. So uh, it's all good. Fellas, that is, uh, and gals, that is Mr. Pat Morrow. He is our Elmer, N-A-D-O-Q-P, and I am Jerry, K-G-8-R-R-Y. Thank you for being here tonight. We'll see you next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, right here on the Crooked River. 
for another The World According to Elmer. And don't miss, we'll be looking for you. So uh, please make it a point to be here and tell your friends about the show, the more the merrier. Until next week, thank you for being here this evening. 73 all, and uh, be safe. Enjoy your week on the fans, everyone. Catch you next week. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Crooked River Radio Network. See you again soon.